Hi everyone, it's Kelsey from the blog Westman Academy and in today's video I wanted to take you guys on a journey of homemaking, just a day of focusing on baking, cleaning. We put Christmas away so I want to reuse and repurpose the decorations I had currently. I want to rearrange them in our house do a little bit of deep cleaning. I have a new recipe I'm going to try and I wanted to take you along the journey of seasoning our cast iron. This is cast iron I got for Christmas as a gift from multiple members of my family. It is already pre-seasoned so it could technically be used right away but I wanted to season it on my own, get it a little bit shinier, and since it is a beautiful day out, a high of 55 here in Kansas in January, I was going to open up the windows and season the cast iron and get everything ready to go for more of the colder weather. It has kind of been up and down, but right now we are at decently high temperatures, I would say, for being January. And so I want to take advantage of that, get my cast iron prepped, and just have a nice relaxing afternoon making the home beautiful again. So I'm going to be making a strawberry oat crumble. I'm going to be making one that is gluten-free for my daughter who has celiac disease, and you will see me doing that in the smaller cast iron dish. To make the top part of the crumble, I just took one stick of butter and I decided to use a cheese grater to blend it up to make the top crumble part. You will notice that I switched to a bigger bowl because I realized mm, this one was a bad choice. This was too small. And then eventually I get tired of hand mixing it. And so I switch and put it into my KitchenAid mixer. So I took one stick of butter, one cup of old fashioned rolled oats. I'm going to take one and a half cups of unbleached flour, one cup of brown sugar. And you can also add chopped hazelnuts if you want. Or almonds but I personally don't like any type of nuts so I steered clear from it um, and then I just did 1 4 teaspoon of salt and about 1 4 teaspoon of nutmeg for the strawberry filling I definitely recommend doing two to three pounds I did one pound I like to wash my fruits and vegetables first with this veggie wash. I will have it linked down below. But for the filling, I just took strawberries, cut them up after washing them, one half cup of brown sugar, three tablespoons of cornstarch, one lemon, I squeezed it. I didn't use the lemon zest because the outside was a little bit old and crinkly, but I would add the lemon zest zest if my lemon would have been a little bit fresher and then about one fourth teaspoon of salt Once the filling had about 10 minutes to settle in and create more juices, I placed it in a seasoned cast iron skillet. Again, if you have more strawberries, your filling is going to be thicker, which I recommend. And then on top of that, I also split mine into our pan and then my daughter's gluten-free pan. So if you would like a thicker filling, definitely do two pounds of strawberries at least. Once I smoothed out the fruit filling, 
I just sprinkled on top of all of the crumble that we initially made and then I am just baking it for 55 minutes at 375 degrees Fahrenheit. While this is in the oven, I decided to work on reorganizing and redecorating our built-in shelves. I found this quote, I'm not sure who said it, but I will try to find the author, that said, the joy of collecting antique comes from a great find, but also from that moment when you figure out how to breathe new life into an old piece. I thought that was super fitting as I am decorating these shelves with antiques from my mom, my great grandmas, and antiques that I have found just on Marketplace and antique stores that usually have a story behind them. I love being able to decorate with items that have been used in the past by people that I love and that have been used and loved from different families and from generation to generation. So that is why I love to decorate with antiques. I'm always looking for new finds and I like to be able to rearrange pieces and use it throughout the house. The best method that I have found for seasoning my cast iron after I have washed them, again you don't want to use soap ever with your cast iron, but I rinse them out with water, dry them off so that they don't rust, and then I take canola oil. I have found that that has been the best oil to use for seasoning your cast iron, and then after you've cleaned them when your meal is finished and you place them back on the stove to dry off any water that you have used to rinse your cast iron. I place a little bit of canola oil on top as well. You wanna make sure it's coated nicely, but isn't oversaturated with the canola oil. You don't want it to have a buildup. You just want it to have a nice even layer. And then I bake it at 450 degrees for an hour. I love freshly seasoned cast iron. It's shiny ready to go and feels brand new again. 
So thank you as always for watching my video. Thank you for spending time with me as I work on homemaking skills and making my home beautiful again. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in my next video.